Gene. I've had it for so long. What we gonna do now is go back. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the return of the generation gap. You wanted it, you asked for it, you begged for it. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Return. Here it is. Aaron Matlock, Eric Naduchin coming into some prints because he's not with us since the last time we did a show. So we had to bring that up. A lot has certainly happened and a lot has unfortunately stayed the same. That's, gonna, I guess, going to be a kind of a common theme throughout this episode of The Generation Gap. But it does feel good to be back, Eric. It feels great to be back. I'll tell you what, man. I was chomping at the bit for these last, I don't know, how long has it been? Almost a year? Yeah. It's been too long. It's been too long. I've been chopping at the bit with no outlet. Just wondering, when am I going to see my man, Aaron Matlock? And we're going to get back into the uh, the depths of the studios here in the uh, Mexican AM station here. And, or Spanish, sorry. I didn't mean to... <laughs> See, I'm already going over to PC line. And I'm already messing up right in the intros, Aaron. As, uh, PC is not part of the generation gap. We call it out when we see it or when we hear it. I thought you were kind of uh, paralleling Jesse the Body Ventura and uh, him being down in Mexico. We had to escape to Mexico because our last season edition ended with a bit of a cliffhanger. But we're back, everybody. And as I said, glad to be back. And kind of to bounce off what you said just a moment ago, Eric, I got tired of complaining to myself in the car because that was my only <laughs> outlet my only outlet was the doors of my car while i'm driving up and down new jersey well the best has been um i've seen a lot of people recently that i haven't seen for a couple of years and i'm talking like like 12 13 people you know just it's different parties and things that i've gone to in the past few months and every one of these people who i haven't seen in the last couple of years every one of them said the same thing to me What's up with the show? What's going on with the show? Where's the show? That's awesome. Which inspired me to then reach out and then yeah. made time to reach out and hang out today. And I'm, I'm very glad that you did because I've been just kind of festering some thoughts in my mind, especially recently with everything going on in the world of politics. Still issues, social issues. How are we not on issues? the air on, in a, on a election year? We have to be doing these shows, Aaron. It's, 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 it's well overdue. I kind of feel like Jon Stewart. We left at the wrong time. Exactly. Yeah, you should have just signed a two-year contract, buddy, and then <laughs> retired next year. Yeah. I mean, there's so much material out there, and unfortunately, there's so many political issues that we talked about a year ago, two, three, four, seven years ago, that are still reoccurring. Nothing has been done, or very little has been done. No, nothing's been done. It's change. the same circle. We just literally, we were sitting here in the studio prepping and just listening to some of the old shows. And we yeah. popped one in that had today's date from 2012. So I was like, oh, what were we talking about on today's date in 2012? Well, <laughs> the first thing we said was basically, well, not much has changed. Everything's pretty much the same. <laughs> it's almost word for word, the same opening. It was four years ago, people, and we're still talking about the same stuff. And it's funny, if you did get a chance to hear our last show, what, what was that station we were on in South Jersey? NJC. NJC. WNJC. Mm -hmm. Our last show in there, we did kind of a little, a little comedy spoof as far as... Um, our last show on the air where we, we pretended that the cops came in and we had gunshots go off and fire. And that's kind of how we ended our last show, not knowing when we would get back together to do another show. And yeah, that's how we ended last year's show. Right. It was a, a satire of all the gun violence as a whole that's been going on throughout our country. And fast forward now to 2000, July of 2016, what has changed? It's it's outrageous. Obviously, what people are uh, trying to do isn't working. No. So uh, just like the education system, just like the laws in this country, just like the way things are set up, it needs to be completely changed and thought about in a different way because the old way is obviously not working. The war on drugs 50-plus years isn't working. No. The war on gun violence out there <laughs> isn't working. The way we're teaching police and they're interacting with the citizens that they're supposed to serve isn't working. Here we are, in, again, four years ago, we were having a very similar conversation, and our last show, we mocked it, and here we are, 
two yeah. more men were killed by police, and then during a peaceful protest, someone opened and opened fire and killed police. Well, a group of maniacs opened fire. Well, we're still getting details. Yeah, there's still suspects that it's are being questioned that, yeah, and everything because you know, this is that. so this is so fresh. But don't worry, we're going to comment on it, even yes. if we don't have all the details, because <laughs> that's what the media does. Oh, I'm sorry, no. we're that's not, that's not, not us. our media. Not, not us. Not us. <laughs> not our media. But no. it's crazy that we're still talking about gun violence and and black people getting killed by the police and now people returning fire on the police. <laughs> and wow, I don't know where the people were. They obviously weren't listening to the show back in 2009 and 2008 yeah. and 2010 and 2012 and uh, you know up and even until last summer because all this stuff that's going on now in our world... It's all stuff that we were leading towards, all stuff that we were talking about and warning the people and putting out the signs and saying, hey, this is the road we're on. This is going to happen unless we change. And nobody listened and nobody's obviously changed, Aaron. No, there has been very little as far. One thing we talked about many, many times on this show was de-escalation training for the police dealing with minority citizens in this country. And I don't think anything's been done as far as that's concerned. We have seen the kind of the growth of the Black Lives movement. There has been more social media talk about it. And unfortunately, it's, it's very sad that this happened, but at least it, people saw the sheer brutality of what happened when this young man was shot in his car four times in front of his girlfriend and in front of a four-year-old child in Minneapolis. Uh, that's another thing. So the guy had his four-year-old kid in the back seat. This cop didn't think about the child's life no. or worried about opening fire in a vehicle with two other people that weren't quote-unquote, a suspect of anything. We're Not talking to mention about the guy was just following what the guy told him to do in the first place. Exactly. Broken taillight, uh, according to the reports I've read. A minor tra traffic infraction. And why is there the need? Why is there the, the just the paranoia on the part of law enforcement to reach for your gun automatically after establishing a conversation with this person, seeing there's a child in the car, I mean, the well, odds are that not much is going to happen apart from paying, you know, get, getting served a ticket and then moving on about your day. Business as the usual. The guy was a registered gun owner. Right. He had he a license that. to carry. He mm -hmm. told the cop what you're supposed to do when, when you're carrying yes. and you get pulled over by the cops. You're supposed to tell them, I have a license to carry. I have a, a firearm on me. Here's where it is on my body. Yeah. And then wait for the instructions from the cop on how to handle yourself. The instructions from the cop to this gentleman were... <laughs> Please show me your license. Yeah. Please show me your license to carry. He went to get that license to carry, and the guy shot him. Yeah. And conveniently, the two guys in Baton Rouge that killed the other guy, conveniently, now they were wearing their body armor uh, cameras. Yeah, and they stuff had the like body that. cameras. Conveniently, neither one was conveniently recording at the time of the incident. And if it weren't for the woman who took the video from her vehicle and posted it a couple days later, um, we may have never known the true story of that. And just think about yeah, all the absolutely. ones that we're not hearing about. Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. And what they got us going again right now, they got us fighting amongst each other. Sure. And they're trying to wedge that black versus white thing. They're saying the guy that shot up the cops in Dallas, not only was he out to get white people, but white cops. So now they throw that element of race, try and set off the race card. Try, but you got to mm -hmm. think about it. In that protest, first of all, CNN and Fox were showing all the protests in all the um, cities around the around the country. Yes. Okay. Every one of them had one thing in common. It was multicultural, yep. right? Black, white, gays, you know, Jewish people with their, you could tell because they were wearing the beanies. There was Muslims the, yeah, walking down with their beanies. Yeah. There was, what do you call the Muslim one? I don't want to disrespect. Don't know off the top of my head. All right. Well, there was people of different religions, there was people of different races, and they were all walking peacefully. And that's what's going to get lost in this guy opening fire and killing cops. You know, it's, it's, it's outrageous. And again, we're still talking about it. So if we're still talking about it, no action has been made, and nothing that has been suggested has been implemented that has worked. So what is the next step? What do we do? How does this happen? Or do we just go down the old school of let them divide us by race? Because prior to this, prior to talking about cops, we were talking about Hillary Clinton being a lying bitch. 
We were talking about Donald Trump being a crazy man who may end up being our president. We were talking about, oh, I don't know, the rich and the top 1% and how we need to unite as a people to change the system. But no, not now. We got a couple more gunshots out there. We got a couple more dead people out there. And now we're talking about black versus white and, and what's going on in the streets. Absolutely, and these are these serve as distractions. And by the way, it's the Kufi. Is oh, the, the Kufi. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, I should have known that. I apologize. I didn't know off the top of my head, sorry. Yeah. I, I know the Yamaka, I've heard that many more times. But there we go, for the uh, purpose of completeness. There so, we go. But no, distra- talking about distractions just now, getting distracted off the topic. But that's what we're doing right now in this country, as usual, when real issues start to get talked about. The breakdown of the top 1%, redistributing wealth into this country, coming up with a, 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 me, a medical system in this country that can actually work, and all these things that have primarily been talked about by the Sanders campaign, and a lot of this stuff is now being pushed aside and forgotten in our minds because we have the sensational media, uh, 24-7 news networks that are going to be following this story to death. Pardon the pun, but it's good, that's what happens every single time something like this happens in our country, and unfortunately, it's happening far, far too often. It's funny you bring up the Sanders campaign and think about how many youth and how many young people and how many people actually voted for him for him actually to actually beat Hillary Clinton. Absolutely. Waking up with that slap in the face that, guess what, it is rigged and you can't do a damn thing about it. Speaking of it being rigged, I saw firsthand. I mean, I knew that I I didn't I didn't know, but I had a strong uh, suspicion that. Clinton would win New Jersey, and you and I, Eric, both are in, in New Jersey. I had to register as Democrat to be able to vote for Sanders. So did I. <laughs> I, I you know, and I, I did that way back in uh, in January because I know the the primaries in New Jersey are very late, and I knew I had plenty of time, but I wanted to make sure I did it. And I saw twice because the first time I went to the wrong polling place. My information was incorrect. I went to the wrong one, and I noticed there, there was one young man who was not able to vote. He said, I registered as a Democrat uh, last month. Here's my information. They would not let him vote in the primary because apparently the first time around, I think it was like libertarian. I, th- I, thought, they heard, I thought I heard the name Gary Johnson, so I guess he voted okay. for a third party the, first, like the last presidential election, so they would not let him vote. Same thing happened. Woman switched from Republican to Democrat, at the, the correct polling place I went to, would, they would not let her vote because they apparently, in their system or on their forms, they did not see that she had updated information. I'm not saying the system's rigged. I just think it. I, well, you oh, are. I, I, I agree with you. On. But no. We've been saying it. We're not just saying it from now. We're talking about 08 well, election. Sure. We're talking about back in 2000 election. It's not just something we're just talking about being rigged now because right. Bernie Sanders woke up a bunch of, uh, you know, 18 to 25 year olds right but these issues i saw in two separate places and i'm just thinking to myself multiply that nationwide to how many different polling areas and how many different counties how many different townships it, you know you start to it wonder was stacked against him to win in the first place they never expect him to make the charge he did make sure. and make the effect that he did made and they've done a great job of really you got to remember the beginning of june we were still voting i mean june 6th we, yeah. we voted in in new jersey and, you know, there was still that rally behind Bernie Sanders. Mm-hmm. It is now July, a month later. He's pretty much been silenced. Yeah. He hasn't been covered. It's completely Hillary, Hillary, Hillary. And um, where's that momentum take us? You know, we have the conventions coming up in a couple weeks. And, you know, it's supposed to be a lot of people showing up and, and, and protesting. But is that really going to make a difference? And what's that going to do or what's that going to look like now? These protests that'll go down at the DNC and the RNC in the next couple of weeks. What's that going to look like now after last night's incident of cops being shot? First of all, they're already walking around in full army military garb, you know, from head to toe with all their different equipment. And they talk about gun control. Look at these guns that these guys are using or standing around with in the streets, you know, protecting us. You know, if if this is just the like the fire that was just outside the studio is if this is just the spark that sets off the bigger fire, what's going to happen in the next couple of weeks when these conventions, you know, get together. Oh, sure. And I am particularly concerned because both candidates we have one on the Republican side is just inconsistent. Also is, is a liar and who has no idea what he's getting himself into. And then you could, 
I, I'm not, I wouldn't even say contrast, but then you kind of parallel that with the Democratic side. Another one who's been very dishonest, liar, um, someone who is, for lack of a better term, a war hawk. She is no, she's not shy of, of getting down and dirty. So what is that going to say to our country or about our country when we move forward into 2017 and for the next four years? I am very concerned about the direction of this country, where it's going to go. And just to kind of finalize one little point about Sanders is I, the last thing I heard from him, and I just want to get your opinion, Eric, um, that video that he put out on YouTube, that like 24 minute video where he just kind of addressing, he didn't drop out of the race. Did you see that? But he was addressing all these different concerns. No, because I knew what was going to happen. I know what's going to happen okay. this whole time. So none of this is surprising because again, here on the generation gap, Eric Naduch and Aaron Matlock, Hello. hopefully back on a weekly podcast, if not biweekly, if not, Maybe no. a couple times a week. If our studios know. aren't burning down or people aren't trying to break in and you uh, shoot know. us. Um, and, and thank you again, Aaron, for saving the day. Um, as we pulled up to the studio this afternoon, um, <laughs> yeah, there was a uh, there was a fire outside the studio in the uh, in the smoking trash can yeah, the, it, that somebody decided to put paper in that you put your half lit cigarette when you're done in and paper and lit cigarette don't go well. It's just funny that. Uh, you know, it's I think there's a line from Futurama, one of those wacky cartoons, and it's like, you do the right thing, people are never going to know you did anything at all. That's mm. what it is. But so yeah, so I just thought it was a bit odd. Getting back to the uh, finishing up about the Sanders thing, I thought it was just very interesting that he put out this video. Uh, he addressed a lot of the concerns that his campaign has been trying to focus on throughout the course of seven plus months, and then, like you said, then silence, nothing else. A meeting with Hillary Clinton, a meeting with. President Obama, Obama yep. and, and nothing up, else. Yeah, go back to your job, and we'll leave it at that. I did hear him just recently. I uh, we'll talk about it in a little bit, I'm sure. But when he's talking about the um, GMO labeling, they they have a couple quotes of from him on the Senate floor, kind of opposing the GMO labeling, saying it doesn't go far enough. But we'll cover that a little bit later in the show, I'm sure. Yeah, and actually, I've seen some of those GMO labelings in full effect in my grocery store. Okay, it means absolutely nothing to me. And we'll get to that when we get to that, right. but I'll tell you why. Um, so if, if, if you've been paying attention, and, and if honestly, if we've been on the air, I don't know, was Trump a candidate the last time we did a show? No. He, no he, it was he towards not, the end of the summer. Yeah, he, he had not officially entered. Okay. I believe we just heard from Ted Cruz at that point, because okay. he was like the first one to jump in on the... See, Republican side. You say you're, you're worried about where this country goes, where, whether either one of these people get elected. And now I believe, well, I don't really care, but I believe that Trump has a chance, but he won't win. Um, but look at the choices they gave us. <laughs> and we thought the 2000 choices Sanders, were bad. Sanders, who was good, is still how old? You know what I mean? Where's the young choice? Where's the where's yeah, that 50-year-old, 60-year-old candidate? You know, I mean. Well, Clinton and Trump are both uh, 69 years old. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. Well, Clinton's just been waiting her turn. Oh, yeah. And that's why it was set up from the beginning. How mm. can we get Hillary Clinton, first of all, who had this scandal, who literally just walked away? Oh, conveniently, my husband meets with the DA, and, oh, you know, it's all good, and don't worry about it. They were getting off anyway. We all knew she was getting off. Fox News knew she was getting off the whole time. Everybody's known. That's why Bernie Sanders didn't even bring it up in the campaign, because he knew she was going to get off. We all knew this, all right? So a year ago when Trump got in, a friend of mine texted me and he goes, you know, what do you think about Trump? What do you think, you know, why is he there? And I said, Trump is a distraction. They will put Trump up against Hillary Clinton because people will say he's so outrageous that there's no way we can elect him as president. And by default, we'll vote for Hillary Clinton. And then it looks like a lot more people want a Hillary Clinton as your president than they really do. Right. And that's what's going to happen. You know, sure. after the convention, you, all you need to do is get half of the Bernie people to vote for Hillary, and they'll get more than half of those people to vote for her, and she'll beat Trump by double digits, and we'll all go, oh, the first woman president. We're progressive as a country. Look at us. We're moving forward. First we had the black. Now we got the woman. You know, like, th we are so immature and childish and grade schoolish when it comes to our politics and it comes to where we are as a country. We should be so much further ahead than we really are. We really should. We should be 20 years ahead of where we are at this point in our lives, and we're not there. 
Oh, no, absolutely. We'd see that. You see that every day with the just the social issues that still occur in this country and the, the divisiveness of this campaign, and, and not just on the Democratic or Republican side, but on both sides. We're just seeing how, to use your word, Eric, immature our nation is and how the citizens are, whether it's the people showing up at the, up at the Trump rallies with the anti-immigration uh, statements, with the anti um, anti-religion, anti-cultural you know, uh, cultural differences, or on the Democratic side, where we have this, um, this divisiveness between the wealthy and non-wealthy, who's for big business, who's, who's too um, progressive, I guess is a, a word they were throwing towards Sanders, a socialist, a very nasty word in American politics, apparently. And we are just, everything's being polarized. And like I, was, I said a moment ago that we thought our choices in 2000 were bad. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's why it was even close enough for them to steal that one. Sure. You know, um, think about it. Our choices are always bad. Why? Why? Who who decides these are our choices? You know, you just turn around one day and go, all right, here's there four people that are running for the Demac Democratic Party for president. One's Hillary Clinton. We all know she's going to be the next president. But these other three guys are running. And, then, oh, there's <laughs> 20 other ones for Republicans. <laughs> yeah. One of these idiots is going to honorarily step up and lose to Hillary in November. What do you think? All right. We talked about back in 2012 how it was, you know, the Mayans and the whole calendar thing. And it was like, ooh, it wasn't the end of the world that it was the end of a cycle, a, 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 a mental cycle, like a, um, a mindset. And okay. what 2012 was supposed to represent is the awakening of the people, the awakening of the consciousness. And, and we, we talked about that several times. Now, fast forward four years later, the people are waking up. Oh my God! Our cor our elections are corrupt. Mm -hmm. Our politicians are corrupt. Wait a minute. Those big business guys. I think they have a lot of interest giving money to our politicians to have. A Wait a minute. A lot. Again, it's immature that we're just getting to this point now. But at least we're starting to see more people actually waking up mm -hmm. to the corruption from head to toe. And again, like the police force, like the training, like the education system, like everything from top to bottom in this country, the old way, let the old, hey, you know what? It was great. It was great in the 40s and the 50s and right after World War II with the baby boom and the construction and the wow, it was great. Guess what? It was awesome for white people. It's not that way anymore. There's a new greatness that needs to be had, but we can't keep building and piggybacking off the old it's time to knock down these old buildings and build more different ones that make sense it's time to instead of keep rebuilding the same bridge and road advance the technology did you see the solar roads that we talked about yes. are finally being implemented on uh, route, route 66? 66 did you see that i did see that. of course we're yeah. finally getting our first solar road you know what i mean all the technology that's at our hand in front of us we need to get ahead of and it seems like instead of getting ahead of these things we we not only behind we're way behind on the implementation of them absolutely we are on we we live in such a great time and place and if we got a lot of the the old business interests and the old political mindset out of the way to kind of paraphrase that bob dylan song times are a changing step step out of the, the aisle make way because we live in a time when we can totally revolutionize the way medicine is through 3d printing and understanding the human genome and then moving forward with our technology different sources of energy we've talked about thorium r nuclear reactors in the past that's something that has not been even talked about and we've we have this degrading nuclear energy God, system one, in our world in indian point new york yes is leaking and they just said there's streams of oil or some sort of substance are leaking you can tell it's coming right from the power plant yeah. into the river and we have the ability to not make, not, not make like a, sort of like a coal fusion energy, but we have the ability to r really, really revamp and make it much, much more safe for our current generation and future generations. And we're not doing it. We're not taking advantage of the knowledge that we have. We're not investing in the future. And we're just spinning the wheels of repetitiveness. Because the old guys are on their way out and they need to hang on to what they got. All right, these old oil companies, these old coal companies, all these old big companies. Listen, oil's not going anywhere. It's we, not going anywhere. We love plastic. They made it cheap we this summer. Oil. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> I loved it. For like six months, I was filling up for 20 bucks again. I was like, wow, remember those days? Yeah, but that's the thing. We're not going to get rid of oil, not anytime soon. There's still going to be plenty of money being made. It's an alternative. 
energy. It's not yeah. replacing yours completely. It's we, an other option. Right, but we, we, we do. We need to look at this objectively. Everybody needs to look at this objectively and say, this is not sustainable. We need to start implementing things that are more sustainable. That's all. And that's what we've talked about for years on this program and that more programs need to start talking about. Fortunately, Eric, every time we do this show, we do say that more people are waking up and that's true. But we need to have like a mass awakening of people that just look at things objectively and freaking get it. I'm sp- I'm starting to talk to more people that get it, and it, 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 it's funny. But like I'm at the point now that we've done this show for so many years now that – you either get it or you don't. And I'm like yeah. almost getting tired of like waking you up to it because you know what? The decisions I've been able to make being awake and making, you know, specific choices where you spend your money, how you spend your money, where your business goes, you know, have worked out well for me in the last few years. So taking the knowledge that we're sure. getting from the show and, and trying to leave to the people has worked out for me. And I'm guessing I'm getting a little selfish, but it's more like frustration. Like, Come on, we're still at the beginning stages of waking up, people. Like, let's go already. Get that. Get your shit yeah. together. Turn off the alarm clock. Take a shower. Oh ha- get, get some energy in you. For for a perfect example is I'm still on the face page. Okay. I'm still active on our face page. I actually just bumped our likes up by a few people. I logged on a that. couple nights ago just to check it out, see what's going on. I love the stories that you're posting. Yeah. So still keeping the people informed if they want to follow it, however they want to do it. Generation Gap Radio on the Facebook. Mm-hmm. Um. Looking at people in the last two days between, you know, coming out and saying, uh, you know, how can we keep killing these black people? Like, we really need to do something about it. Like, we're genuinely being upset and wanting to do something about it. And then the next day, to uh, obviously today, with, with the cops being shot, how quickly that turns into, like... The inner racist kind of sneaks out a little bit. Yeah. And it's like, you know, for instance, I saw one quote saying... Basically saying that, you know, to all my cop buddies out there, keep your heads up and, you know, be safe out there on the streets. And if somebody comes up to you, you know, empty your clip. Like, em- empty like, your clip. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, no, maybe that's that's what getting these cops in trouble in the first place. If someone comes up to you, just someone, just random John Q. Public, Joe White guy or John Black guy comes up to you, empty your clip. That's advice. Yeah. And I'm like, not necessarily you know, good like, advice. This is like, it's just answering violence with more violence. Yes, absolutely. Which isn't going to solve anything. And, um, and that's what I'm I, I, I'm I'm worried about. I know there's more people are waking are waking waking up. There is an awakening, but it still worries me that there is such vast amounts of ignorance. Oh, there's so many there's so many cavemen still out there too with that yeah. mindset. Not just in our country, but and they, they vote all, all around the world. And yes, they vote, and we see a lot of them at certain rallies. And it's unfortunate that there's still that ignorance. I mean, I'm I'm glad that I'm aware of it, but at the same time, I'm like. I want to be done with this BS. We, we see them at every rally. Every. All right, think about a rally. What is a rally? Why are we even rallying? You know, they go out there. They have these pre preset speeches. They try and hit that note where it gets everybody cheering and like America, yeah! yeah. And they get them all riled up and like, you know why they still use rallies? Because that type of um, psychological like propaganda still works. It does. Yeah, absolutely. Rallies. We're having rallies. Why don't you come? And actually tell me something. You don't give him these rah-rah speeches and these punchlines and these go-get-em lines. You're not doing anything. So the fact that the the cavemen people that aren't awake, <laughs> like that, that still, you know, here, I got something for them, too. Yeah. Yeah, damn it. Oh. I jumped the gun. That's all. Yeah, <laughs> all right, this is your theme song. This should be the theme song to everybody going to a rally. All right? It, 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 it's absolutely the truth, though, because what are you accomplishing at a rally? Just to show support, and then we'll, you know, if the if only half the people are there that we expected, we'll only show the screen from a certain way, so it looks like the place is packed. Sure. All right, so you're not even getting the rallies. They still work to the public and to the voting people. They yeah. shouldn't. But they do. Because you got these diehards that are for this particular candidate for this particular movement, whatever it might be. And then that group mentality, if someone comes in there and they're kind of on the fence, they kind of want to experience what the rally is all about, there's a strong likelihood that that person's opinions are going to be swayed by going there. So, yeah, absolutely, Eric. It's very effective. When did it also become 
that you have to be 100% on or 100% off. Oh, I think that's been for a long time. Because ever since like, I've you can't ever be like, politics. oh, I like this guy's opinions here, there, and this, but I don't like them here. And, and like just being, oh, no, you're either with us or you're against us. Yeah. You're either for Black Lives Matter or you're for Blue Lives Matter. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, why are you putting us against each other? And if anybody again? says all lives matter, they're going to get booed. Oh my God, that's such a thing now. All lives matter. You know, that's it. And then the Black Lives Matter people are saying that you can't say that that's racist. No, you're all just labeling, labeling, yes. labeling, labeling, which keeps you off of talking about the subject, which is why we always try to avoid labels here on the generation gap. That's right. Because what does it do? It just puts us against each other because your shirt's blue and mine's green. And you know what? My green shirt's better. <laughs> Isn't, wasn't that a Dr. Seuss book with stars on bellies and beaches? Yeah. And, but no, it's it's absolutely the point. If you're not talking about an issue, having an intelligent com- uh, intelligent debate about an issue. And you can't have an intelligent debate on Facebook. No, you can't. Then you're not able to get beyond what is holding you or is keeping you apart. And you're not able to remedy whatever situation you're trying to talk about or debate. Just like what's going on right now. So now all the... Yesterday, all the news agencies were flooded with, oh, my, these cops are killing all these black guys. Da, 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 da. And now, after last night's tragedy where cops getting killed, it's like, we got to shoot them all. They should all be shot. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why does it have to be one extreme or the other? Why can't it be cops? You learn how to not shoot black people all the time. and De-escalation. Maybe, oh, de-escalation. There's a word for that. And then Obama gets on last night. Uh, and he's doing his Obama thing. Oh, he gentlemen. does the Obama thing. Yeah. I, you know, it, it's fun seeing Obama on his last six months before he's out because he's back to, like, cool slang, like, chilling Obama. <laughs> like, did you see him at Ever the Hillary, that Larry Wilmore bit? You know, Hillary, he's, he's Hillary Clinton chill rally out. the other day. Obama mm-hmm. was being cool Obama. But then yesterday he had to do a speech. Yeah. All right. And he got back to being president, Obama, giving, you know, giving me the vice president. And he's like, you know, uh, uh, the last time I was up here, we said we don't need to be we need to do something about this tragedy. And the time before that, we said the same thing. And the time before that. And he's going, we we need to start talking about America and how to change and this and that, you know, changes in America. And I lean to Lindsay, my wife, in case this is your first time, I lean over to my wife and I go. Man, it's a shame he's not in some sort of position to maybe make some sort of changes that could affect the country <laughs> and how we operate and how things go. I mean, it's a shame that this man, <laughs> <laughs> this man in a suit, can't really do anything about it. Talking to millions of people. <laughs> like, hello? Like, that's how you, again, another way you know presidency is just a puppet uh, position, but. This man who's the president of the United States is trying to say, oh, if we could only change this or we could only... No, you could change... You're the president, dude. Like, what what have you done to try and change it? You're the president. But you're going to come out and make another speech about how you've made all these speeches and hoping this one's the last... Well, when you when, when what are they doing? Oh, okay, okay. But what about some of the changes that that this administration has tried to implement, but continues to get blocked by Congress just over BS political squabble? And there it goes back into the government not functioning the way it was set up to function. All right. Again, years ago when they changed the rules, that instead, basically, back in the Senate, I don't know, ten years ago was when they changed it. Twelve years ago, I forget. You used to just have to have the majority of the people voting to make something pass or not pass. Mm -hmm. They changed the rules, and now you have to have a minority. You have to have at least 60 votes. Right. You have to have at least 60 to get that to pass. Well, since they've made that rule, nothing gets passed anymore. It used to be you get the majority of the votes. So if I beat you 53 to uh, 47, guess what? We win. That passes now it's got to be, i got to get that 60. And that's how more politics and backdoor things and more corruption goes into nothing getting done. And that's why they go, well, it's been a stalemate in Congress for all these years. No, duh, because you won't let these people, you change the rules. And you changed it so you can keep the rules the way you want them. The politicians are getting paid more than ever, and they're doing less work than ever before. The only real work that they do in government is to raise more money for the party. Whether it's Democrat or Republican, they're raising more money for the party. That's where most of their time and effort is spent. It's in campaign fundraising and or, or, or party fundraising. And that's one of the huge problems with our political system here in this country. And it also indicates that we have a system 
it's, it's more clear now than ever before that our system can be bought. And why can it be bought? Because if you don't have the, f the time, money, and energy like lobbying to get these elected officials to you know, come to your side of, uh, of the argument, then you're not going to get anything done in this country. And unless you have a huge lobbying group behind you, politicians are not going to listen to you. They're not going to listen to you anyway. They're going to say what they have to say. See, that's where Donald Trump is great. Because he says what he has to say to get you to like him. And then you forgot what he said a month ago that totally discredits what he just told you today. And you go, wow, you yeah. know, I kind of like this guy. That's why he's yeah. borrowing a lot of the Bernie Sanders lines right sure. now. Because he's if he can steal enough of those people, I'm telling you, he could, he could do it. And that's he why won't I do it. No, he won't. Because you're going to scare us as it gets close. Like, yo, this guy could really win. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to see that debate between and people saying, why would you want to see a debate between Sanders and Trump? I want to see that because I want to see how different and similar these candidates are on that stage. I want to hear the insanity that might ensue. I want to see that. I like debates. I really enjoy that. Debates are great because although they kind of know what kind of questions they're getting, they yeah. can't. And if you know how to read and watch a debate, you know, it's just like listening to anything these press secretaries come out and tell you. Sure. You got to learn how to listen and read between the lines. Wow. Exactly. Look, I can't believe you ever listened to, um, um, what is it? Janet Yellen right now, ahead of the fed. Uh, do you ever listen to her come out and speak? <laughs> yeah. Oh my yes. God, it's amazing. This lady uses the biggest, most outrageous words and does not answer your question. No. But you can hear what she's saying if you know what you're listening for. And that's what he speaks. And so they come out and that's what they say. But that's what's good about a debate. Mm -hmm. When they can't answer it or need to answer it in a different way, you know how they actually stand on that question. Absolutely. And that's and that's part of the reason I'm glad you mentioned uh, Janet Yellen, because it's amazing how she can walk around a question. Oh, it, it is Her masterful. And Hillary Clinton must have yes. to the same school, brother. It, 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 it is so good. It is masterful. I, I, I give her that. But... <laughs> <laughs> but that, absolutely, and if you're not going to get out there and you're not going to talk about these issues, then we're not going to know where you stand on said issues. Whether, whether you answer them or don't answer them, at least then we'll know the people who want to pay attention to what's going on in this country, they should be better informed. And how else are you going to do that without having a one-on-one -on -one or multiple-person debate? The problem is they're misinformed because of their media outlets and, and the stuff they see on the Internet that's not true that they should believe and the stuff that they told isn't true but they should believe. And, again, it all goes back to waking up and, and taking it for what it is. And, you know, all these college kids that were behind Bernie, guess what? I guarantee you they're going to end up voting for Hillary. Or even if they don't, she's going to win. I mean... It's in the bag, all right? But they're going to go, well, wait a minute. I thought all my college debt was going to get paid off. Because first of all, and that's what Lindsay kept bringing up. She goes, they keep talking about all this college debt for these kids. What about the people that have already graduated and have been in the world five, ten years that are saddled with $100,000 oh, plus sure. debt? What are they doing about us? They weren't talking. Neither Bernie Sanders wasn't talking about you either. No. They were talking about current college kids. They are talking about future college kids. Yes. And by the time it would get implemented, it would be. It might be your kid <laughs> by the time the, it would get implemented for the you know either free college or you know helping out with the tuition and stuff like that. Yeah, that so, message was focused on the like the millennial and beyond generations. Yeah, it wasn't focused on the uh, you know thirty one and thirty two, thirty five year olds out there with no real jobs, with no real way to make a living because you got to put out a thousand dollars a month in student loans for the rest of your life. Yeah, and one one other thing I was very disappointed about they did not talk about. I'll just mention it right now. So here's my platform: is that they did not discuss about changing FIFA back to allowing people to take out loans, student loans for graduate school. They got rid of that several years ago. And I, I, st I don't understand why. Why can't you take out a loan if you want to further your education? It doesn't make any sense to me. And that's something that was not brought up. I'm not talking about free education. I'm talking about free grad school. I don't, I don't want anything for free. All right, because it's not really for free. It's not for free. It's not anyway. for free. And guess what? If it's free, are you getting the best of the best? No, you're not. If you're getting, if I'm offering Aaron free meat, <laughs> free meat versus you could spend a little extra for you know the human grand, meat, the grass fed. Say human meat. I, give you I think I just ate human meat. <laughs> No, it was, it, was, hunger now. it was raccoon. <laughs> Once you get the human meat in, you get the hunger, <laughs> and that's the only thing that can satisfy you. Um, Live you know, from Philadelphia, if everybody. If I offer you the good meat, you know, here's fresh grass fed, no hormones, no GMOs, <laughs> meat. Yeah. Or you can have this one over here for free. 
guess what? Yeah. I don't know, but what's in the free meat? If Taco <laughs> Bell can sell tacos for 99 cents oh, and still make a profit, yeah. what the hell is in that meat? They're going to give you free meat, all right? No, I don't want free meat because you know what's in free meat? Soil People, and green. All right. Why do I, free education? No, because what are you going to do? What do we get? Look at our public schools now as free education. Absolutely. It's terrible. What are they teaching you? They're just indoctrinating you into just living the system and, and just be a part of the wheel that spins this uh, corporate greed that runs the world. It doesn't actually, your public education doesn't get into the essentials of government, how government really works. It talks about the history of government, which is all fine, how, how the system was built. That's okay to learn learn where things started, to understand where we are. But our, our, our higher education, like the high school level, does not get into the fundamentals of our current system, nor does it talk about our banking system, our economic system, nothing nothing that's really exactly. of use. Nothing that teach me how to do bills, how to balance no. a, how how to balance a checkbook, how to if I'm in debt, how to get out of it. You know what I mean? They don't want you. They just want to do it's just an assembly line is yes. what public education is. And even what uh, colleges have become, uh, many of them are just that assembly line to pump you out, filled with already all this debt that you'll never be able to pay back into a world where you just have to work because they're telling you, you got to pay all this debt back. <laughs> it's a business. The college, you know, uh, higher education, college, graduate school level, it's a business. And at the, first and foremost, they need money to keep that business going. And it was just, it, it was never more apparent to me than when I graduated uh, back in 2006 and the president of the university came out and basically, and no, I didn't say basically, he actually said, when you go out into the world, make sure to send money and donations back back to your university. And he was just doing this huge, it was this 30 minute sales pitch on how alumni should send, like basically tithe if you're of the religious and, and you know about tithing and 10% and all that stuff. It's basically sending money back to the school to be grateful that you got this education. And it was just utter BS. And I was, I was, I was just sick listening to this, and that's what it's sick, like sitting there in debt, not even out yet. <laughs> Dude, I was barely in debt because, unlike some of my classmates and colleagues, I worked a full time job. I was debt free one year after graduating Good from job, the university man. because I did, the, I did the two year route. I did the, you know, the, the county college. I did two years. It was. A fraction of the price. When I transferred everything over to the university, I was able to keep it, you know, in check, worked, and I paid that shit off. This goes back to, but not everybody can do that. This goes, to, but this this is a good subject. But a lot of people can and should. <laughs> right. I'm not saying Lindsay shouldn't pay back her student loan at all. She oh, borrowed yeah. it. She of needed course. it. Yeah. The fact is, she only borrowed around sixty thousand dollars. But then you start adding, oh, we're going to start charging you interest and deferments, and yeah. now it's one hundred and fifty thousand. I don't think it's that. It's like one hundred and thirty thousand dollars. But still, to go from sixty to one hundred thirty, that's asinine. And you want you to pay a thousand dollars a month if it was more reasonable, like three hundred bucks a month. Yeah. Hey, you'll, I got no problem paying that three hundred bucks, whatever. You know, however long it takes, but whatever. Thousand dollars a month. You know how much you can do with a thousand dollars? Do a lot. You know how much you can still do with a thousand dollars? It's it's absolutely outrageous. But this goes back to this incorporates everything. This goes back to we have to change the entire system. The world is changing around us. You brought up three D printing, which hasn't even begun to kick the world's ass and how amazing three <laughs> yeah. D printing is, how it's already being implemented, and how it's changing the future. We have robots being implemented in the next ten to fifteen years for the nonsense jobs that can be handled by robots. Sure. Manufacturing stuff. Um, a lot of the uh, farming and stuff is going robotic. Uh, a lot of the fast food jobs is robotic. The stupid stuff that very uneducated people can still do for a living, those jobs are going away. Yeah, We have to refocus on what work is and what money is. Because what you're going to have to do, you're going to have a nation in 30 years of people in their 60s down to their 40s, 40 to 60s years old, that are going to be dumb and not smart enough to work in an environment that can create some kind of pay. So we have to look at how are we going to feed these people? How are these people going to get by? And if we really start to move towards 
I don't want to say away from capitalism, but like start looking in more of a communal way of like there's going to be a certain part of the population that we already take care of now through welfare. There's going to be a certain part of the yeah. population that can't work, that shouldn't work, that won't be able to do it, but they have to feed themselves, clothe themselves, shelter themselves, and there's got to be a structure set up to make that happen. You implement the road things, you implement these vertical gardens and, and local gardening through, you know, all these different things that are starting to happen now. We can't see it now because it's happening now. But we're going to look back, and this is when it's all changing. We've talked about the kid who made the uh, the boat thing that goes around the oceans, cleans up all the plastic. Oh, yeah, yeah. The that's big, like, already ocean implemented. They, that's the yeah. first ones in the ocean already. Mm -hmm. They're building 20 more. There's another kid has got the same sort of invention. They just saw how we can take plastics and make energy out of them. We're on the cusp of all this. But what we need to do is we need to stop trying to build up on the old facade and yeah. build up on the old um, you know, structures of, the again, the old America. That's got to go. The, that old form of government, that old structure of how we run things, how we educate, how we look upon what money is and how we value what people are. That's all got to get destroyed before we can rebuild it into something new. And is this the spark finally where we're starting to see maybe the destruction part come on. Like, where is this going to end? Again, in three weeks, we're going to have these conventions. It's hot. People are pissed off already, and we have all this building up towards it. What could that mean? Yeah, they're coming to the conventions. They feel like they just got ripped off from watching Independence Day 2. They're, they want some destruction in their life. They just watched it on the big screen. No, I get it. The only thing I'd like to keep from the old era is the work ethic, as I think our right now our work ethic in this country is piss poor. We do need a better work ethic and even to an extent a sense of patriotism because we have very there, we are a country of immigrants but there's there's it seems like there's less assimilation into this country and to make this country good everyone's very separate in their their needs and their wants what they expect to get out of their workday world and finally the welfare the welfare system has to go you do not get a good productive workforce if you have a welfare state and with these jobs, a lot of these remedial jobs being taken over by robots, and we're, we're going to see that more and more as the years keep on ticking by. We are not going to be able to replace those jobs with people, and unless we're going to educate ourselves and totally transform how work work that... Well, what work is, really. Well, we're, what we're work talking is. about a complete yes. identity of uh, or mindset of what work is. Because You're you saying you want to bring back the old work ethic. Yeah. I'm not saying you don't want to work hard to get something to get what you want to get. But why do we have to work so hard? Like right now, people are working two jobs. People are working full-time jobs and this and that. You know, what's wrong with no, not no. having to work? What's wait, you know, let's do away with the forty hour work week. Yeah, I'm not let's do I'm away not saying, with everything. Yeah, I am just saying start it all. I'm I'm saying I'm simply saying that the work ethic, the mindset that many people have that I've heard on many, many occasions of people like, Oh, I'm not coming in today. Today's my birthday. I'm not working you can't expect me to work today or something like that. Just that mindset that of your own self importance. No. It's not about you and your time. It's about fulfilling said obligations in order to earn a sustainable living to earn a sustainable living, not to be given one right. through welfare. No, I hear you with the welfare thing, but again, what I'm thinking is more like, like let's look. At, I'm not saying backbreaking labor, but I'm talking about like innovative labor. Right. Well, let's look even at the education system. How it needs to be turned around. Kids should go to school all year round. Sure, absolutely. Kids should go to school all year round. I totally you agree. Get breaks every three months. You get a two week break. During the summer, you get two week breaks. You know that that holiday week. I right love holiday Christmas. month. July should be holiday month. <laughs> Why <laughs> Whatever. Not? You know, but you know what I mean. Yeah, absolutely. Give them, give them off July. But you know what? But also, but let's schedule. Let's schedule school and what we're teaching around the seasons. Like when it's springtime and when it's summertime, and we're going to school, we're doing outdoor activities. We're teaching you yes. how to farm. We're teaching you how to raise this. We're teaching you how to do this. We're teaching you stuff outside in the winter time. Let's focus in on our math and our science and stuff because we're crammed inside anyway. That's the best time to be reading books. But don't tell Perfect. me you want to be teaching these kids math in the dog days of summer. No. Because nobody wants to learn in the dog days of summer because you're supposed to be outside. Take them to a lake. Teach them how to swim. You know, teach all different sorts of things. If you do school on a year-round basis, again, with a couple weeks off every couple months, you know, in the summertime, maybe give them a month. But three weeks, because then think about it. It also extends the day. Because it helps parents who are have to work till nine to five. Absolutely. How how am I supposed to work till five o'clock when my kid gets done with school at three? 
Mm-hmm. You know what I mean that that's a whole issue, and then we worry about childcare and all this stuff in this country. I mean, I'm thinking on a grand, giant scale. Like we have to rethink everything because the future is happening in front of us, and the robotics and everything that's happening and all the changes. They're just going to change. So many people will be out of work. It won't just be the remedial jobs. It'll be truck drivers if there's driverless trucks. You know, it, sure. how many people are employed that have successfully raised families through decades of driving trucks? Mm-hmm. That job could be gone in 15, 20 years. Tech, Actually, the chances yeah. are very high it will be gone. Absolutely. Right? So we have to start rethinking about this stuff now to start the implementation so when it happens, we don't have more than half the country out of work with no way to pay them, no way that the welfare that they're getting is even enough for our government to support, but for them to even live off. Yeah. So we have all these problems about to happen. 3D printing could change the world. It's going to change the world. All these other implementations, they're here, they're changing the world. Some of these haven't, haven't even been invented yet. They're all gonna change the world. It's gonna happen in our lifetime. It's gonna happen soon. But right now, today, 2016, we're fighting about stuff that we were fighting in the 50s and the 60s. Mm. We're still fighting about, you know, the drug war. Obviously, it hasn't worked. Let's look at the countries that have legalized all drugs. Drug use has dropped. High, cri- high violent crimes have dropped because the people that seek heroin are going to find it. They f- How do we have all these heroin addicts in America? Oh, is it that because heroin's illegal? Is it that hard to find? They obviously find it. So no, people that want to do people, heroin people will love, find heroin. It's because people love opiates and doctors are writing opiate prescriptions left and right. People that want to find marijuana will find marijuana. Sure. People that want to find cocaine will find cocaine, although it's illegal. That's not going to change if you just legalized all this stuff. Mm-hmm. The same people will be able to get it they won't have to get into dangerous situations to get what their fix is. And let's not pretend And you're going to clear out the prison problem. population. I don't, well, don't want to call it. Let's not call it a drug problem because it's obviously not a problem because America loves drugs. America loves drugs. We love our drugs. So to call it a problem is like almost lying to ourselves because it's only a problem for those that get out of hand with it. Right. The people that can keep their little secret and their problem and not let it really affect their daily lives. What's the problem? Is it their habit? Their drug habit? Their habit. Right. You know? It's not a good habit. People got yoga habits now. Yeah. People got, you know, I got to go to yoga today. I got to go to yoga today. It's I gotta everything, go to yoga today. everything in moderation. And if you can keep a handle on things that, and you're a responsible enough person to do that and do what you want to do in the confines of your own home, who am I to tell you you can't do it? If you're not raping, murdering, then you know what? Mazel tov. Think about it. Colorado. Legal. Boom. They're making more than they even... Now, and you. this is the first time ever a government program was projected to make a certain amount of money and actually exceeded <laughs> the <laughs> expectations was the projection on how much tax revenue they would get in Colorado for legalizing pot. Okay? They've not only exceeded it, they kicked that number's ass. If you brought that, it's it's the first time in history there's been a successful government taxation where they've actually gotten more revenue than they predicted to get. Usually it's, there's a huge shortfall. Sure. Um, I mean, but we really, we have to stop living in the past and all you, all these guys are still senators. They're all still congressmen. 20, 30 years, these people are in, in office. And that's another problem. People like our good friend Rick, Rick, um, Rick. Traitor, oh, traitor yeah, from yeah. the conservative commandos. Yep. He still votes. He's still swaying an election one way or the other with his vote and his nonsense and his old way of thinking that doesn't apply today or the future that's going to happen that he won't be around for. But I Why w- is he still making our decisions? Why is his people and that that group of old white conservative still in control of this stuff? Is that maybe why the police haven't stopped killing black people? Is that why maybe the drug war still targets black and brown people? Is that why all these because all this racism from back in the 40s, 50s, and 60s is still in our government. It hasn't been weeded out because these people haven't died off yet and we keep quote unquote voting them back in. Well one thing I will say because I mean Rick's not here to defend himself so let me just play the devil's advocate. Uh, one thing I do agree- know, I love you, Rick. Yeah, well, I know. <laughs> one thing I do agree with him on, and he's mentioned on that on his show several times, is term limits, and I am all for that. Term limits for yeah, elected everybody. officials. If we have them for presidents and we have them for governors, why do we not have them for the representatives and for the senates? Eight year terms, and even j- the judiciary. Eight why year terms for everybody? Exactly. I am absolutely fine with that. 
no problems. We'll pick a number, whatever number. You want to yeah. do 12, we'll do 12. All right, 12's fine, but I, 12. I wouldn't exceed 12. No, you shouldn't be able to no more stay than three in terms. Congress or Senate longer than the president, two term presidents. Uh, yeah. So if a president's going to be two term governors. Years, two term governors. That's it. Two terms. You don't want to stagger how they're elected so you can overlap, you know, if, you're, if it was, you know, your party's president versus another party's president, whatever. However, you want to do it. But there has to be term limits. The problem is the people that will vote for term limits are voting themselves out of jobs and millions and millions of dollars. Right. And, and that still won't do away with the corruption no. when the Supreme Court allows a decision like, oh, corporations are people too, and they can give as much as they want. Yeah. That's our. That's the courts, the highest courts in the land that are doing the bidding of Monsanto and other giant corporations out there. You know what I mean? Like it's True. outrageous. Like we're still fighting about, you know, black cops, white cops killing white people, black people. Like the killing, the violence, the separation, Aaron, and that's what they want us, and that's why we're not progressing as a country. That's why our choices are Hillary and Donald Trump. <laughs> that's why nothing's going to change, because the old is still there, the new is ready, knocking down the door, and we're not allowing it to implement. A lot of this alternative energy. I thought in the 90s growing up when I was just a, you know a kid and a teenager that this was – they were talking about alternative energies. That should have been implemented in, by now. Oh, absolutely. We were talking about using uh, – basically using trash and recyclables for – for energy. We're talking about solar panels. All right, and solar panels were back in the 70s. Why are we such on a remedial scale? Still, we're being held back because of the few that are making so much money on the system the way it is, the way it's set up. Just like the banks. We had to go bail out the banks instead of letting those banks go away. New banks would have came and take, took their place, and we would have been fine. Instead, we had to rebuild on the old foundation of those banks and give them the American people's money. You know, Brexit, good for them last week, pulling out of the EU. And everybody was, oh, the stock market's going to crash. Good. I hope the stock market does crash. I hope you lose all your damn money. And I hope the people that have all their 401ks invested in something that they don't know nothing about wake the hell up when their money is gone when the stock market crashes too. Now, this is all stuff we've talked about for the last, I don't know, six, seven, eight years on the generation gap. Yes, Eight. and it's all being implemented in front of our eyes. It's all, I'm not shocked at any of it. No, but it, it just it's 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 bothersome that again we're so remedial in the change part of it. Why should it take so long to implement? Why should it take? I mean, we're rebuilding bridges and roads right now. Why isn't it? Why are we still building it on the technology from the 40s and 50s? Why aren't we implementing? We have one road, Aaron. One road they gave us. A, a, a fraction of a road on Route 66. A part of a road yes. on Route 66. It it's like 10 feet, but you know, it's still part of the road. <laughs> All right. First solar road. Yes. <laughs> it converts like you know, 0.0000 megawatt hours, but it's still part of the road. I mean, I, I understand it's tough to understand or it's tough to try and make decisions now on a future that we can't really see how it's going to go. We don't know how these... Like a lot of people can't see how these technologies are going to change our lives. And that's why we need to elect officials that have a good, have that foresight, that can think fourth dimensionally, that understand technology is changing, that, you know, we are on the cusp of driverless cars. And just to use that as an example, we need to start changing our infrastructure to implement that. It's going to make driving safer. It's going to make driving more productive. And it's going to be a huge advantage to every single person except for those who are in the transportation um, the uh, transportation employment like truck drivers taxi cab uber drivers you know you name it that's why we need to start addressing these issues and figure out how we can transfer these people these newer generations to different professions well here's another thing it's the same thing it's the hybrid thing it's the alternative energy point that i just brought up with the transitioning over to, over to driverless vehicles and stuff like that. It's not going to happen overnight. No, of course It'll not. It'll gradually get implemented into the system. And guess what? You're always going to have your people that want to drive their car. So we'll elect not to use a driverless vehicle. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So there'll still be people on the road physically driving their cars. But you'll see over 20, 30, 40, 50 years, it takes time to implement all that. You'll start to hybrid the two. Just like gasoline oil it's not going anywhere but the hybrid with the alternative energies 
they can coexist. Driverless vehicles and driver full vehicles, I guess you call it, mm-hmm. can exist. You know what I mean? It's not like be all end all manual vehicles. But the, and it's just like just like we can have gun control and still keep our guns. Absolutely, we can have sensible gun control. Like. I don't get how they can't even pass the law where it says, no, actually, I don't want to go on the gun, the, the no fly list thing because the no, it makes sense that if somebody's on a no fly list, they shouldn't be able to go buy a gun. However, we that's a whole other discussion we, we, if we get into the no fly yeah, list. That's why I didn't how bring did my name earlier? get on yes. it. Why is there a list in the first place? Oh, Muhammad is a huge name in the Muslim. I just happen to be Muhammad, but not that Muhammad you have on the list, but it matches up name wise. Now I can't fly. So I don't want to get into lists. However, to just make common sense approaches to buying a gun. That's it. Common sense approaches. Absolutely. It's, and that's the thing. Common sense. And we have the, the, the hugest lobbying group for guns, National Rifle Association. It's, I don't understand why or how this happened when you have a group that started in the, what, the 70s and it was all about safe gun usage and how that kind of corrupt, I say corrupted, but it certainly transformed into, you know, we're not going to make any any um, concessions for gun control, and when you and just like you said, you got to take a common sense approach. If you have adequate background checks, it's not going to it's not going to be a perfect system, but it's going to improve the system that we have. And it's about taking steps. It, it, I don't know. Again, it's that old mentality. That old mentality that's still... I'm not giving an inch. The old mentality that is in 2016 running our world and running our country. And it's like... Yeah. It has to change. We have to do the change quicker than we're allowing it to happen. All right? And it's not. It's not happening. Um, and I, I don't see anything that's going to necessarily change the fact that they have us easily fighting against each other black and white instead of uniting against a common cause. And it's still so easy to separate a lot of us. And I'm not going to say everybody. I'm going to say a lot of us. Because the, I don't know if it's just the places I've been hanging out. But everywhere I go, it's it's multicultured. You know, it's not... I don't even think... Now, I, granted, I grew up going to public school since I was in kindergarten. Yeah, you're so I've both. always been around every type of culture there is that they want to throw in and, and quote-unquote teach in public education. Yeah, um, I've been friends with everybody. But I notice it now, like... It's not like, oh, that's my black friend over there. It's just like, nah, it's just cool. And <laughs> yeah. then, like, we grew up that way, you know, where it was just like, it wasn't a big deal to us. Yeah. And, like, I know a lot of these kids growing up, like, now, they don't they don't see it as, as much. It's, it's just a, it's a, nothing. a race it's, thing. It's, it's not a even, thing. They don't even do it like, oh, that's my black friend. No, it's just like, yeah, that's my buddy. Yeah. You know, like, there, you see, but then we fast forward and look at the older people who still have that. I'm voting for Trump, man, because I know he's against... You know what I mean? Yeah, why are you going to vote for Trump? Because he's going to build a wall. Why are you going to vote for Trump? Because he's going to build a wall. That's like the fallback like default answer. I actually don't think um, illegal aliens should be able to go and uh, exercise a First Amendment right of protesting a <laughs> Trump rally because he wants to send them back for being illegal either. Right. I, I, I totally agree. And, when, and it bothers me when you have people who are here illegally or maybe some who are you know through birth, they are U.S. citizens. And they're burning American flags, waving the Mexican flag. That's not the way to go either. You mean those anchor babies? <laughs> Where did that name come from? These people, I'll tell you what. Because well, we need buzzwords. The, the, we need buzzwords it, and catchphrases. And, and, that's it why, works. That, and that's why Donald Trump oh is working. Oh, my God, it he works. He uses those catchphrases. You hear the crooked Hillary, lying Ted, all those things. They resonate with oh, people. it's great, isn't and, it? And it's uh, people to an extent. People love it. Yeah. People love it. People they do love it. it. They're like, yeah, Trump. <laughs> Yeah, like no, <laughs> you know it's funny, and they keep floating um, Elizabeth Warren as Hillary's possible vice president candidate. Yeah, why would you have, uh, you know, Elizabeth Warren? She's trumpeted for being, you know, against this, the status quo, and you know, we'll vote this way if we're a certain way. Well, what's the best thing we can do to get rid of her vote? Oh, let's make her vice president. Shut her up. Sure. Hillary wins. Now we don't have to worry about Elizabeth Warren's vote to sway the people on whether it be GMO labeling or gun control or anything else that goes against the status quo that the big people are still trying to keep in. Think about it. Sure. She's in there rebel rousing, making noise, trying to get point. people to vote the other way. What's the best way to eliminate her? Come join us, baby. Yeah. Be our vice president. A we'll all around the world. Nobody will care what you're saying because you're the vice president. When has a vice president ever mattered? No. With the well, exception of uh, Lyndon Johnson, you know. 
There you go. Mr. Kennedy. All right. Well, nobody's going to shoot Hillary because they've been just patiently keeping her on the bench for the last eight years. Don't worry, hon. You just don't die on us. We'll get you your turn in 2016. It's been set up from the beginning. And here it is. Sure. Here it is. She was the dead set winner for, and then Obama came out of nowhere, and it was perfect because they needed to unite the country because everybody was pissed off about Bush for the last eight years. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I don't think Hillary, quotes, Hillary really wouldn't have quelled the masses at that point. A woman president at that point really wouldn't have quelled the masses where you I, got a I young black president like, oh, man. I, it, it, was, it was the feel-good story of the year, and then you began to see a year and a half, two years in, that we became a more divided country than and we have in recent decades. Think about it. Obama's, you know, the quote-unquote black president. And come on. You guys listen to the show. You know where I'm going with this. I'm not being an asshole. All right? The quote-unquote the black president, you know, he's, he's the guy. But there's been more police shootings under Obama of black men right. than you know most presidents in history. I don't think any of them really. Um, I, I, I'm just throwing it out there. I don't know to be a, a quote unquote fact, but you know well, a I, lot I, of I, black guys have gotten killed in the last eight years by the hands of cops. Well, sure. And again, we'll say he's coming out yesterday talking about blah 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 blah. And I tell my wife, well, maybe if there was somebody in some sort of position that maybe they could have done something to implement some kind of new training or way to go about it. Maybe somebody that would even understand the culture of people that are getting preyed upon by the police. Who could that possibly be? Wow. I mean, if there was only somebody, there was only somebody. Meanwhile, he's got six months left. This is the time to pass stuff like Absolutely. that. This is the stuff to get in because you're not worried about re-election. You're not worried about what the people are going to say. you got to do what's right. You got to do what's right. You need to legalize marijuana, legalize hemp production in this country. You need to do something about the guns. You need to do something about the police training. It needs to be a countrywide. This is a basic training for every police department from Mayberry to Minneapolis <laughs> to freaking L.A. All of them need to have this some sort of, you know, whatever training. You know, I'm not the guy to come up with that. I'm just bringing it up. There's got to be some sort of implementation that happens all across the country. Let's rethink how our communities are shaped, how we act, how we want to be treated. Do you want to come? Do you want to sit on the corner in your neighborhood and have any cop, black, white, or anything, come up and harass you and bother you when you're yeah. just sitting on the stoop hanging out? Absolutely. Here's an idea, just right off the cuff. Why not get the police chiefs of the most dangerous cities in America have a sit down with the president and the attorney general and figure out just lock the doors and Take two, three, four days and just figure out how we can make, at least get feedback, at least start the dialogue of how we can make this better, how we can de-escalate situations that are traffic infractions, how we can just, business as usual. How about when the, the guy day. actually complies? No, like, oh my God, the list of names he read off last night. Of we have to take out the, the fear and paranoia. Years. Yeah, It's like 10, 12, 13, 14, they just keep going name after name. Oh, remember this guy got shot by the cop? Oh yeah, remember this guy that got shot by the cop? Oh yeah, remember this guy that got shot? And it's like, some of them were fleeing, some of them were fighting back, some of them were resisting, some of them just got plain shot. Yeah. The one thing they all had in common, not one of these grand juries has convicted any of these police in any of these cities across the country for killing any of these black guys that they killed. Mm -hmm. Or girls, because the wh we we did the story. Uh, this was uh, this was last year. Oh, the lady that got pulled uh, in put Texas. in jail, and yeah. then she mysteriously died. She mysteriously died in jail. Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, and guess what? You know, we got cameras in the jail. They weren't working that night. I don't know why, but unfortunately, we don't tape from that one yeah. either. Let's enforce those directives that we have on the books or statutes, whatever you are in whatever state you live in. But it, you know, every police barracks. Every prison we have the camera technology is so cheap now and the cost of digital storage essentially is nothing. All right. This should be something that this I'm not a fan of the executive orders. We've complained about those many times on the on the show in the past. Well, apparently but, they work. Cause but this is something that could work. It's just an idea. Executive order monitoring. If you're not if you're not if your cameras aren't on. Under these checks, like you have weekly checks, monthly checks, random checks to make sure that, hey, all this data is here. If it's not, you lose your funding. You don't get your toys. You don't get your tank. You don't get your SWAT gear. All right. Just an idea. They already got their tanks. They already got their SWAT gear. All that came after 9-11 with the damn Homeland Security and giving all these monies. And all we did right. was set the country up 
So now when incidents happen like this, the police can respond in full-blown armored and military-style gear. That's the message that the government and the police are sending to the people. Don't worry. And we're the com- media. We're coming to help, but we're coming in full riot gear with gas masks, and we're going to look scary, and we're going to be lined up and in unison, and guess what? That doesn't sound like somebody to protect and serve. That doesn't sound like somebody that works for the people. That doesn't sound like public servants. That sounds like an army saying, you're either going to do it our way or we're going to shut you down. And you get shot when complying. Shot when complying. Complying while black. It's now a. Uh, yeah. It's now trending as a... Um, That's worse than contempt of cop. Jesus. It, it's outrageous. You know. And, and again, here we are. We just played this earlier in the show. We listened to... Um, or I'm sorry, prior to the show, we listened to a show that Aaron and I did on this date four years ago. And <laughs> they all, as much things as change, they stay the same, yeah, right? Is that is. the quote or whatever it was? That's kind, of, that's kind of the guideline for today's show anyway. But it's, it is. It's, uh, what, what has a year done? What has a year done for us? Except make people more scared, more upset, and a little less wealthy. There you go. All right, the Generation Gap. Eric Nadushin, Aaron Matlock. Right here with you back again for, I'm just going to say this is season nine of the Generation Gap. It sounds about right. 2007. Yeah, so, so season nine. So, yeah. Wow, look at that. Here we go. With bits and breaks and all kinds of stuff in between. It doesn't matter because we have the wonderful world of on-demand audio. Woo! <laughs> yeah, things have certainly changed since we started the show years back. Or any this, of those old shows this, on cassette tape? No, no, no. This is no certainly real, CD. Real, no, no cassette. <laughs> Although our demos were on cassette, I think. Okay. I don't know, but the old uh, school of broadcasting cassette tapes. Yep. Popping them in there, yeah. And uh, I think some of our, our even our shows last year on WNJC uh, ended up uh, being recorded on cassette tape just as a backup because you never knew when the equipment would be faulty. I loved, I loved our contest that we did on that station. And, and for those of you who didn't hear our, our, our 1360 era uh, last year. Our brief three months. We yeah. did a summer. We, we did, did a summer. summer. It was yeah. fun. I'm glad we did it. Yeah, me too. I, I remember I, the contest. I loved our contest. It was, uh, you know, try, it, we, I don't know, I thought, I thought, Maybe we didn't give away anything, but we wanted like listener feedback, but uh, people could only hear us in the parking lot. So we were trying to encourage people to come to the parking lot, but if they weren't in the parking lot, they couldn't hear us anyway. So it was kind of, <laughs> we were just spinning our wheels. So well, we never gave away any shirts. <laughs> we, we, you had some shirts and balloons and for the, you know, say, wake up America. I got to find my Generation Gap shirt. Oh, I got all my shirts. I, I got a... I have like, one. It's different style because there was four different styles through the years. And okay. And I also have... A giant box of balloons that say Generation Gap. <laughs> well, next time you come over here, well, let's, let's fill the uh, place with red once. balloons. Didn't we did that once. We did. What studio? We did was that, that at Wi Fi? Was that at Wi Fi? Yeah. We just kept blowing them up. They, they were there for like a week. People just kept pushing them out of the way. Nobody threw them away. Threw they them just away. kept pushing they just them. Kept pushing them, 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 you know? them yeah. into the corner. I yeah. love it. We were a hell of a promotions team. I'll tell you that. Oh, uh, no doubt. We we had some great benefit rate uh, fundraisers at uh, plenty of the uh, establishments around Philadelphia. Yeah. Good times.
So just kind of wrapping up the show, there were a couple other things that uh, at least I wanted to bring up, Eric. And uh, let me just name off a couple things and uh, let me know what you think. Um, we have, uh, apart from... Are we doing yeah. a rapid fire segment? Can we say rapid fire right now? Or is everybody I, walking on eggshells? Oh, yeah. <laughs> rapid fire, pun in, not intended for today's purposes. Uh, no, I mean, so many of our, our bits have been taken from other radio shows. Some of our bits? Are you uh, kidding? The majority of if them. If you listen to any kind of talk radio today, whether it's sports talk or anything, there is a segment or two that they have they've obviously stolen from us because we were doing them for years, yeah. thinking nobody was listening. And then every stuff, everything we were doing was cutting edge, apparently, because they're all copying it today. Yeah, and it's, it's funny, too, because a lot of these stations, we did apply for work at at one point or another. Seriously. <laughs> so the demos are floating around corporate offices, or Somebody's at least at one point tape, they were. Yeah. And they're like, you know what? Oh, that's a good segment. We should do like a rapid fire thing. Why do we have to pay we these guys? Do, we can do we it ourselves. We should do some sort of not news segment where they talk about stories from Florida. <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. All right, let's hear what you got. Rapid All right, fire just, and yeah, just a few things here. Just worth mentioning. Um, uh, Zika is still in the news with uh, 200 ah, U.S. pregnant women. Zika. Yeah, this year it's Zika. Nice. Last year it was pig virus. Uh, that was the sl- no, last year it was... Um, well, was uh, that two years ago? Yeah. No, no, no. Last year it was the real bad one from, from Africa that you didn't want to get. Oh, Ebola. Ebola. Yeah, last year was no, Ebola. That's pig, right. Pig flu. Swine flu. Swine flu. That's from like four or five years ago, and then the other one was the pig flu. Yeah, or, yeah pig virus. I was thinking like Howard Stern or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, well, oh, they're all, come, you know, every year, some, you know, it, watch, something out, every year, yeah. watch out, get a vaccine. Well, there's not a vaccine out yet, but they're rapidly trying to make one, and that's what I hear in the news a lot, that, uh, you know, once the, the Zika vaccine is out, we're testing it on mice right now, we'll have it ready for you. Uh, so the CDC currently, as of uh, July 2016, is monitoring monitoring two, 320 U.S. pregnant women with Zika. Right now, as to date, only um, seven children have been born with the um, disease. The you know the, the small head birth it, like, defects keep them from growing or something. Yeah, right? and convenient how all this stuff came out after um, they released those genetically modified mosquitoes down the South Af- uh, South America yeah. a few years ago. I think we did Oh yeah, you know what? We did do a story on what's going to happen with these genetically modified mosquitoes that they released. Maybe this is the result. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, maybe, maybe not. I mean, <laughs> yeah. look, mosquitoes they transmit disease. We know that, you know. Mm-hmm. You can get all kinds of different, you know, viruses and stuff from them. But I never heard of Zika. I thought it was. I thought they were bringing back the cooler, the wine cooler. Oh, Zima. Zima. I was <laughs> like, I was excited. I was. I used to drink that stuff. Dude, you know, Zima was in the news recently. <laughs> I, I'm serious because because back a couple of years ago, they put out a face page petition. I saw that to bring back to bring Zima. It back. I signed it. Did you? Really? I did. It was like, it was like they needed eight hundred signatures, and they only got like fifty eight. Yeah, I was one. So of you were. Them. Oh, you, you I don't were. know about that. I'm on their face. They have a Facebook page though, and it's okay. like. I, I liked it. All right, maybe that maybe that was it. I I don't know, but ah, oh, bring back Zima. <laughs> oh my, oh, I was, I was not a fan. I've replaced it with Twisted Tea. Okay, so that's my. You got to switch off. We call it candy flipping. You know, start off with a couple beers. I like that. Switch to Twisted Tea, but you can't drink too much of that Twisted Tea. No, sometimes it gives you heartburn. That stuff eats up your stomach. The, well, lining. The, the other part is is that caffeine sneaks up on you. Mm-hmm. You drink two or three, you next thing you know you're buzzing around. Woo! So we flip. We flip from the twisted tea, have a couple, flip mm. back to the Corona, have a couple, flip back again. And, you know, at your, at your, you know, you want to go two in a row, three in a row, yeah. go, you know, whatever your palate tells you. And we call it candy flipping. I like that. It's a lifestyle choice. Tell there, your friends. There you go. And, and I like it because at the basics, it's moderation. And it's not going to get you sick. You're not okay. doing shots. You're not doing the same amount of alcohol. It's not like it's carbonated. It's not going to throw you off or anything like that. So I love it. This is sound advice. I'm a sound guy. <laughs> All because of Zima and Zika. <laughs> <laughs> no, so it's just something that, you know, has should been... Should I be worried? I mean, should I be worried about Zika, Aaron? Come on, tell the truth. Are you worried about it? No, I'm not. We have no chance of uh, being pregnant. We're not going to, um, you know... I, I shouldn't even say we're go- not going to Latin America, where it's more 
prevalent down there, but it is coming up here with 320 cases. It's something that sh- should be concerned. Uh, you should be concerned about, I should say. Uh, what I've done, at least, because I live right near a lake, so mosquitoes are horrible yeah. in my backyard. What I did, just it works for me, I put up uh, bat boxes because bats eat like thousands of mosquitoes That's every single cool. night. And I have noticed a reduction. Really? So, yeah. So, so there's bat box and there's Batman. Yes. Nice. <laughs> And Batman is hot boxing in the bat house. Okay, cool, right. cool, very cool. Yeah, use nature to yeah. defeat nature. That's all. And the bats migrate. Well, we could spray them with these chemicals. Ah! <laughs> well, that's the thing, and that that kind of leads Let's me into kill them with chemicals. They'll end up in the water. And well, kill that, our fish. Yeah, that kind of leads me to it. my next story because I I go to one of the big box stores and I just see. Isles. Is that where you got your bat box? The big no. box? No, I built I built it. Oh, you built the big box bat box. I built I built the bat box. It's is like the a, bat box big. Uh, maybe it's by. If you got like, the bat box at the see. big box store. You think the bat box would be bigger? Oh, definitely. <laughs> it should sure, certainly have more chambers because everything's bigger. <laughs> it's a two chamber bat house. I'm trying to think in my mind. I, th- I believe it's like um, 18 or 20 by. Are you 14. harvesting guano? I am not. No, <laughs> no. I'm I'm letting it lay, man. That's Spanish poop for everybody out there. That's right. Bat droppings. Bat poop. <laughs> Ace Ventura too. <laughs> so I want to know. I know it. <laughs> But uh, no, no, it, it, I have seen a sharp reduction in the mosquitoes. There are some great, I mean, just anything. If you need to know how to do something, chances are some kind soul or a group of, of good people put together a tutorial on YouTube. I think it's a fabulous resource. It taught me how to build one. And it was I, I know how to tie a knot on my tie now. For There's, years now. How many different knots do you know now? I just know the one. <laughs> okay. I've never had to tie another. I don't. <sighs> I sometimes do the fancy knots just because they're there on YouTube. I want to learn how to do well, them. Why do not? I want to do Yeah. <laughs> I tied an Eldridge today. Um, but that kind of leads me into my next story I wanted to bring up with mosquito repellents. I see aisles at the big box store of just all these citronella candles, sprays, deet. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, self, I have a four-year-old son. I don't want him to get bitten up by mosquitoes. And if one of these mosquitoes did have Zika at later summer, you know, with the mosquitoes migrating and everything, and obviously our climate getting a little bit warmer, summer lasting longer, then this is a possibility. It might not be a likely possibility, but it's a possibility. So I'm going to think about this as a parent. Well, do I spray my son when we're out having fun at some nature area? Direct spray. Yeah. And even though it's only 25% DEET. If it kills mosquitoes, what can it do to your child? Right, exactly. And skin is the largest organ of our body. It absorbs everything. Our pores get clogged with a bunch of shit. Not if you listen to people that tell you that the aluminum in your uh, doesn't get absorbed into your body when you use your deodorant. Oh, okay. Oh, well, the aluminum is just on the outside. It doesn't get absorbed into the skin. Yeah, okay, buddy. Thanks. So I went to one of the sites that... Actually, I just did a quick G-search of okay. how to detox the body from uh, bug Poisons. repellents. Yeah. So I, I put in that, wor- that phrase exactly. How to detox the body from mosquito repellents or bug repellents. And the first link that comes up is our buddy... Our buddy. I say that with quotes. Uh, from Natural News, Mike Ranger. All right. Oh, uh, Mike Mike Adams, Hell oh, Ranger. Okay, Mike Ranger. Okay. That's <laughs> his alter ego is Mike Ranger now because now that he's making money on his site, I'm now a lot of his uh, a lot of his news and stuff isn't as, you know, health oriented as it used to be. Well, that's my thing. I'm seeing that a lot of when before it was a pretty good when people basically when not a whole lot of people knew about it and he was maybe hitting 500 people a day. All right. You know, your ads aren't going to get much play. You start getting, you know, tens of thousands of people per day. Oh, you can start making money off this stuff. And a lot of the stories that I'm seeing now, unfortunately, uh, some of the products that is are recommended in these stories about how to detox the body also, oh, look, they're right here on the side. You can buy them from these separate buy shops. Buy them from me. Right. We can get you better. And just to, by way of example. Same thing I, happened with Alex Jones and his Oh, site. sure. Yeah. He don't break no. I don't even go to that site no more. I mean, he used to actually give you... I mean, yeah, it was conspiracy laden, but it was actually like news you weren't getting elsewhere. Now it's Absolutely. just such crap. Since that whole gun thing on Pierce uh, well, Morgan. And since his... Yeah, gun thing on Pierce Mar- Morgan, his website went up. Mm-hmm. All his... Now he's got uh, tons of paid different sort of stores and survival stuff and... He's paid. He's getting paid. Oh, no, yeah, he's getting and paid. And all of a sudden, the stories change a little bit when you're getting paid. So is uh, Ranger. And, that's, yeah. and, and it just, 
it's something that I wanted to bring up on our show because we've cited these websites before in the past. And hey, look, whether we cite them then, now is a whole different story. I wanted to bring them up and just say that like some of these um, uh, techniques for detoxing the body, I, I took every single one of these and I also I did a separate search for them. One example is the um, Essiac tea, and that's been known to be a toxin. So people taking this as a form of detox, it could actually do more harm to the body than the bug spray is doing to you. So just be aware of, of shit like that. And some of these things, uh, like Eric, I, I know you were a proponent of this, but just by doing a little bit of research, uh, I found some something you might want to check out on your own with milk thistle. Ooh, and milk thistle is my favorite. I know, and that, that a lot of milk thistle as of late has been laced with... Um, uh, my toxins as a result of funguses that have grown in the milk thistle. Milk thistle itself is a great source for detoxing, but when it's stored, a lot of it's, it's not stored in the, in uh, the correct conditions and funguses grow and that could really do harm to the body if taken over a prolonged period of time. So wow. just something to look into maybe. How about this? Um, so Lindsay switched jobs. So we had to be off health insurance for a little bit. Yeah. And I wasn't getting my prescription of, um, I used to do like a generic Pilosec because I right. get really bad acid reflux. I've been getting it for years. I mean, years, seven, eight, maybe 10 years. And I know this stuff's bad and, you know, I'm seeing the news, you know, you don't want to do it all the time. And I'd already been thinking about it myself. And I tried to get off it a couple of times, but I would, I would just keep getting the heartburn. I mean, what am I going to do, right? So I haven't had it for months. I just bought it over the counter stuff. And then as, you know, as time went by, you know, I was taking the over-counter stuff maybe every day, maybe twice a day sometimes because it's not as good. But um, right. I was just thinking about it the other day because I actually just got heartburn for the yesterday, yesterday for the first time in a while. That, wow, I haven't had to use any of the pills in a while. I am getting the heartburn, but it's only – or the acid reflux, but it's only for a couple minutes and then it subsides. Okay. Where before it would be so bad that, like, I got to do – it would be hours and I'd be like, all right, I got to take something. So I think I've slowly weaned myself off of. Oh, it's good. That right. I have to look into the milk thistle a lot more. Yeah, I just wanted to bring I mean, it that's up. Something I do. My I do the milk thistle, St. John's Wort, and a mm -hmm. daily vitamin. I noticed just with me, I would do the St. John's Wort, and I would. Um, it, not that it always happened, but I noticed an increase, um, a sore throat for me. It just was how, and that's the only f thing I was able to factor in. The, the only dietary huh. thing that i changed so i i'm kind of i've i've moved away from some of those things although some of them i still stick my green tea every day you know don't go wrong with that and uh, and whole foods green tea and whole foods so just wanted to make you aware of that a couple of those other things like um like uh, clay baths and uh, implementing citrus like uh, lemon water lime water uh, and just a good sauna sweat are some ways, and I've cross-checked these. Well, what did I are see? Some something about um of detoxing the body and de and and opening up the skin pores. Apple cider vinegar. Apple cider a little vinegar. A little bit of water. You put it in. You spray your kid down. Mm -hmm. Boom! All natural suns. Uh, all natural mosquito repellent and yeah. bug repellent overall. And I the mean, only you smell like vinegar, but oh, yeah, off okay. doesn't smell any better. No, I think it smells worse. Ugh, I'd rather take the sweat and get in your tongue and you go. Aah! Yeah, it tastes. Oh, you're tasting off. Yeah, <laughs> great. And also, just be leery of any time, like, here, that's like, magnesium is essential for over 300 body processes, and vitamin C, and you can OD on vitamins. You, you should, yeah, absolutely. A lot of the vitamins that you need are just in foods, so if you take, you don't want to eat certain vegetables or something like that, just mix them with some juice and juice them up in a blender if you have the time to do so. If you have to take a, if you want to take a vitamin supplement, take one with the least amount of of uh, minerals and vitamins per capsule so at least that way you know you won't over you have a less likelihood of overdosing on the vitamins and less health risks and a lot of those are water soluble and can wash out of your system anyway so yeah i mean if you're eating right you really only need a certain amount of you know the, the vitamins are basically a boost if you can't sure eat right or yeah to help out yeah you're you traveling you're on the road get them too because a lot of these chinese Vitamins aren't even what they tell you it is. Oh, absolutely. So. And anything that says it's organic coming out of China is pretty much just a lie. We've talked about that many times on the show. Yeah. So GMO labeling. Yesterday, 
Um, oh, wait. I, I didn't hear anything about it. I was too busy worried about the cops and shooting those black guys. Well, so yesterday. There was no report on, you mean the government voted on something and changed our laws? What did they do? On January, uh, January, listen to me, July 6th, 2016, the Senate voted 63 to 30 to pass a bill that would display GMO content in words, pictures, or barcodes that can be scanned with smartphones on food products to let consumers know if there's genetically modified ingredients in them. However, <laughs> well, it has been met with a lot of criticism, uh, for one, Bernie Sanders say it does not go far enough, and the way this bill is written, it could undermine the more strict guidelines that states like Vermont have implemented Aha. on their GMOs. That's why they would pass something like that. You mean if you actually read the bill, it does exactly opposite of what it's almost telling us it's going to do? I told you, I've already started to see some of these yeah. GMO labels. Not quite all opposite, says is but... Made with some GMO ingredients. That's all it says. It doesn't tell you what they are, right. how much it is, what's in there. So, no, it doesn't go enough. No, it, it doesn't go enough. It's a step in the right direction. No, don't get me wrong. I don't it is. so. I'm it is. Become more cynical. I'm being that old cynical guy now. That's okay. I'm, I'm here to do the contrast then. It, right. It's a step in the right direction because it, gets, it, it shows people something. It gets them talking about it. And with the ease of information, the accessibility of information, people can look up GMOs quite easily and they can do their own research. Not say they will, but at least that little picture could get people to do their own research a bit more. And it doesn't, w one of the downsides, the loopholes of the food ingredients like uh, sugars from the derived from beets, soybean oil, they can start off as genetically engineered crops, but through the process of breaking them down, they might not resemble the original uh, the original substance, so they might not be considered genetically modified after the processing is. But they're going to still tell me effect. it's a strawberry, <laughs> or at least derived from strawberries. Right. Yes, it's a strawberry preserve. <laughs> but so that is a loophole. I'm not saying that this is this is great by any stretch of the imagination it's not even good it's just okay because again it's getting more people talking about it it's a small baby step in the right direction in my humble opinion it's something i just wanted to bring up on the show because it's something we've talked about almost each and every episode sure. of the generation gap this is important i I've, again if if the structure of government is going to continue the way it is then i don't have any faith in anything getting changed through them it's got to be through people. It's got to be through activism. It's got to be through, you know, movements and stuff like that to actually make it change. Because even when they do give us a change, when you read the front and print, it never is what they say it's supposed to be. So, you know, just look at the Patriot Act. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and that's that. All the uh, all in all, that's pretty much the generation gap. Um, should we get into the not news news segment? We could do one and hit the road. Yeah, I got a minute. All right, let's hit the button. It's time for the not news news. That's right. It's our favorite segment of all time. This. This week's segment of Not News News is brought to you by the Dallas Police Department. Duck! Drunk 19-year-old babysitter with four kids in the car gives the dumbest excuse imaginable for driving while intoxicated with youngsters. Don't worry, officer. Every person my age partakes in highly, act, highly illegal activities like these is what this young girl, Nicole Diaz, told an officer when she was discovered at a local park with four youngsters in the back ranging in ages 4 to 11. When she started to drive out of the parking lot, one onlooker said, I blocked the exit with my car. There would have been some kind of accident, I'm sure, she added. So a, um, a parent of two at the local park, stepped in, intervened, and blocked this drunk 19-year-old from leaving the park with the kids she was babysitting until police arrived, where she was taken into custody, and the kids were returned to their parents. I thought you were going to say the police shot her. No. <laughs> no, she's, uh, she's some, some shade of white. Oh, okay. So she's okay. Diaz, Diaz, is it? Yeah. All right, we'll let you off. Don't you come back here You're no more. You're lucky it's not Johnson. <laughs> 
Worker blows a fortune on a bender after his boss makes a decimal point error and pays him $40,000 too much. See, it's bang favor in your error, and so they consider the error, and then they go, oh, well, wait a minute. But this brings up a point. I mean, if, you, if your job paid you too much... But then they're going to realize the error and say, give us the money back. Why right. would you spend any of it? Well, <laughs> it's not like you're going to get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> you're eventually going to be on the on on the on the you know you're going to have a tab for 40 G's, bud. Oh, see, I would spend it fast, so they couldn't take it back. <laughs> once it's spent, no, 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 no. They're going to remedy this. He's going to have to pay that money back. A construction worker um, splashed out a fortune on partying and fast living after his boss paid him forty thousand dollars too much. <laughs> Partying and fast living. You mean drugs and hookers? <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, he, uh, th- this construction See, worker. It goes back to reading in between the lines. Who wrote this? Janet Yellen. Did Janet Yellen write this? <laughs> She's moonlighting as a, a UK uh, writer. <laughs> it's from the Mirror. Um, this uh, this construction worker, Steve Burke, blew twenty eight thousand on a new car, cocaine, booze, and hotels after a costly blunder from his. Em- Employer. He was expecting a paycheck of only 446 pounds, because this is over in England, and he instead received a massive check for 44,660 pounds. And this direct deposit error that he noticed in the afternoon, he immediately went on a bender and, as I said, bought drugs, cars, and costly hotel rooms, which totaled over $40,000. Which is only different from this construction worker or any construction worker's weekly Friday when they receive their paycheck, which also goes to drugs, booze, <laughs> And seedy motels. So right. he just upped it up to yeah. the nice motel. Instead of oh. instead of a car, they usually put gas in their car. <laughs> but no. Enough to get to the drug dealer to buy the drugs to get back to the bar to get loaded and pick up that 19-year-old who was watching a kid. <laughs> <laughs> See, it all comes full hey, circle. I heard you had that kid in the car. You want to go for a ride? <laughs> <laughs> you look fun. <laughs> Reporter, let flood victims carry her so her expensive shoes did not get wet. Uh, oh, Jesus. Yeah. Lita, Cum- uh, Lita Cumming, who worked for a TV station Azteca Publa, made a public apology following her antics on a, a TV city of uh, Puebla. Sorry. Uh, during a flood, she was seen by flood victims carrying her over a large stretch of flooded street so that her expensive shoes did not get wet. This led to uh, outcry on social media, and the reporter was fired from the TV station, Azteca, where afterwards she did make a public apology, but a little too much too late. Well, I don't know about getting her fired, but she should have been punched and thrown into the water. How dare you, you bitch. You bitch. First of all, you're in Mexico, one of the poorest countries in the world yeah. still still even though we rape and pillage their 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 you know workforce yep. <laughs> you we're bitch. occupying their studios now you are in a flood mm-hmm. people are losing their homes mm-hmm. probably tin uh, tin roof homes that they put together themselves oh, sure. these poor people and you your damn shoes are more important you can't get wet why would you wear expensive shoes Why out in you, Mexico anyway? You know what? And you're a damn reporter. You're out yeah. there on the streets, hitting the streets. You should be out there with you know, gear on. You should know what you're walking into. Yeah. You and then you're gonna and these poor people, she probably I'll give you one peso if you carry me across the water. You're already underwater anyway. Yeah, one peso is like eight cents. Yeah. I know. <sighs> so that's that from Mexico. Yeah. Cereal burglar done in by woman's butt. What kind of cereal? <laughs> Delicious GMO free cereal. There you go. A cereal burglar wanted for breaking into numerous Upper East Side eateries was done in Wednesday when he spotted a woman sunbathing. Uh, the onlooker? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm trying to word this appropriately. Uh, I like the story here because it says... When the creep grabbed her butt, she sprang up and began to scream. Then an off-duty rookie cop shot heard, him. <laughs> <laughs> did not shoot him. Heard the screams and followed him on foot. The the perpetrator was on a bicycle. He was able to evade the rookie cop, but he did at one point drop his bicycle. 
the police canvassed the area and waited for him to return. He did return and pick up the bike. At that point, the police took him into custody and he was charged with um, possession of a stolen bicycle <laughs> <laughs> yeah. with um, forcible touching for grabbing the woman in the park and also had some open prior arrest records for drug possession, eva- um, fair evasions, grand larceny and possession of stolen property. <sighs> Dead ass. That is <laughs> exhibitionist in Berlin. Dressing is off the menu. Exhibitionists flock to a nude restaurant where staffers oh. and guests are encouraged to, to bear be all. I, I seen this on TV I, yeah. and it's like, I don't know. Do you really want to be naked? Like, I'm worried about the hair in your head falling into my soup. Yeah. I need. Uh, what kind of hair nets are they wearing? Armpit nets. I mean, yeah. are they wearing chest nets over there? You know, like the men that got hairy chest cooking my food. Like, oh, did it say this to servers or is it the cook? No, I'm out. Yeah. I'm out on this yeah. whole idea. Yeah. I'm out. I only want to try and like figure out a way to get in. No, I'm out on this whole idea. It's the servers and it's the uh, the patrons. And the patrons are given a free drink if they come in and bear all. Well, I got no problem coming in and bearing all. And then uh, what about the guy that got up before me that sat in the same seat that was bearing all? Now I got to work. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's a a whole hygiene issue and, you know, denim and cloth and polyester to a lesser extent. They do protect. I have issues about going into like a public restroom after somebody's just used it. You got to sit down. Absolutely. You know what? I'm going to wait. I want to sit on the warm seat. (laughs) And finally, just a reminder that alligators can climb trees. Really? I did not know that. Story out of Florida where... (laughs) Of course. Well, come on. We did it first, okay? So I'm going to stick with it. Uh, uh, Ronald uh, Seriaco of Cape Coral, Florida, was walking into his front yard this past weekend when he noticed a large reptile up in his tree. He thought it was some sort of lizard or iguana, but the animal control confirmed it was a five-foot alligator that had climbed up that tree. Wow. Good for that. Good for that croc. Yeah, you know, sunbathing, chilling out, or just you know. Well, there's I mean, a cat up there. He had to get the cat, or kid, or kid. Is it Disney near Disney World? Yeah, very, very sad. Very sad. Watch your kids, everybody, and don't let them go with drunk nineteen-year-old babysitters. That's right. They might end up in a gorilla pit. Yes. Think if that gorilla was white, they'd shoot it. I'm just uh, sorry. That's that's for the police to decide. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's above our pay grade. <laughs> <laughs> We're just humble broadcasters, I, ladies I'm and gentlemen. I'm sorry for all the ill time jokes at the end, but you know, come on. Like, what are we gonna do? We yeah. talked about it already. If you listen to the beginning of the show, don't worry about what we said at the end of the show. No, but joking. it's the thing is that we talk about it every episode. We talk about it every year, and nothing's changed. So we just try to break you down with facts, and build you up with truth, and send you out with laughter. Yeah. And sometimes that laughter is not politically correct, which is point of the, was the whole point of the laughter. Absolutely. All right. Aaron Nadugin, Eric Matlock. Sounds right to me. Sounds like been candy flipping already. <laughs> <laughs> Generation Gap, thanks, everybody, for listening. We'll try and get back to you real soon with another podcast coming your way. Generation Gap Radio on Facebook is the place to find us. Check it out. <laughs>